So in this lecture, we're going to determine the four different types of equations that deal with motion under constant acceleration. So let's look at these two graphs. So in graph one, we have our y-axis to be acceleration and our x-axis to be the time. In the second graph, we have our y-axis to be our velocity and the x-axis to be our time. So, what does this graph tell us about our acceleration? Well, notice our acceleration is a straight line with a slope of zero. In fact, our acceleration on this graph is constant. It's at this point. So whatever this numerical value is, that is our constant acceleration. Now, if we look at this graph, that graph tells us what our velocity is. In fact, it tells us the rate of change of our velocity. According to this graph, we have a constant linear slope, and that means that our rate of change is constant. And because acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, that means our acceleration too is constant. So both of these graphs depict a constant acceleration. Now, when the acceleration of our object is constant, that means that the instantaneous acceleration is equal to the average acceleration. So that is depicted by this graph. Notice that if we choose our acceleration at any given instant, that acceleration will be identical to the average acceleration. Now, with that information, we can derive our first equation for constant acceleration. So, recall that from this information, we know that our uh, instantaneous acceleration given by A is equal to our average acceleration, which is equal to the formula. So, average is simply change in our velocity, V final given by simply V, minus V initial given by V naught, divided by the change in time given by T. So, T is change in our time. Now, Let's rewrite this equation by bringing the t to our acceleration side and then bringing our v initial over. And we get the v final, the final velocity of our object is equal to our v initial, the initial velocity of our object plus our constant acceleration times our time. So this only works, this equation only works under constant acceleration because if our acceleration was not constant, our average acceleration would not be equal to our in the, or instantaneous acceleration. So here's our first equation. So let's do a quick example. Let's find the final velocity of our car that accelerates at a constant acceleration of 10 meters per second second after 5 seconds. So we simply take our formula, we make the assumption that our car began from rest, so our V, not our V initial, is zero. So V, fi or v final, simply V, is equal to zero plus 10 times 5, and that gives us 50 meters per second is the final velocity of our car. So let's derive the second um, equation under constant acceleration. So, Recall that average velocity is equal to our change in displacement divided by change in time given simply by t. Now let's bring t to this side and let's bring our initial displacement or initial position to the other side. So we get our final position equals initial position given by x0 plus our average velocity times our time elapsed. Now, because our acceleration is constant, we can see from this graph that our average velocity is simply, we can get our average velocity by taking our final velocity, adding to our initial velocity, and dividing by two. We can simply use the average to find our average velocity. And that's given by this formula. So this is our second formula for motion under constant acceleration. And we're going to use this equation and plug this V or uh, average velocity into this average velocity here. So let's rewrite that. X, our final position, is equal to initial position X naught plus. Now we're taking this and plugging into our average velocity here. So that's shown here, multiplied by T. 
Now, let's take our velocity from our first derivation, this v, and plug it into this v here. So we get the following. Now we have equal our initial position plus we plugged in our equation 1 into this V. So V naught plus A times T plus our V naught, the whole thing divided by 2, multiplied by time. Now let's combine all the terms inside. So V naught plus V naught equals 2 V naught plus AT divided by 2, multiplied by time. Now let's so, uh, let's multiply this t, so distribute this t to each side, and we get our x final position is equal to initial position plus 2 times v naught times t divided by 2 plus a times t2 divided by 2. Uh, now we simply uh, cancel these 2's and we get the following final equation. Our final position of our object moving under constant acceleration is equal to initial position of that object plus initial velocity times the time elapsed plus our constant acceleration times time squared divided by 2. So this only works for a condition where we have constant acceleration and it gives us the final position along the x-axis or even along the y-axis. All we have to do is replace our x with y's. Now, let's do a quick example. An object starting from rest travels for 3 seconds with a constant acceleration of 3 meters per second squared. Find the displacement of our object. So, we're making the assumption that our beginning position, our x initial or x naught, is 0 meters. We're also making the assumption that because our object is beginning from rest, our initial velocity v naught is also 0 meters per second. So our final position x is equal to 0 meters plus 0 meters per second times 3 seconds for our t. So these two guys are 0 plus 3 meters per second squared is our acceleration times 3 seconds squared divided by 2. So that's 27 divided by 2. 13.5 meters is how far our object displaced after travel for 3 seconds under constant acceleration. And finally, let's do our final derivation. Let's find our fourth derivation for motion under constant acceleration. So, let's take this equation once more. Let's take this equation that we got from this, um, this equation. So, we have x final is equal to, our final position is equal to initial position plus our average velocity times time. Now, once again, let's take this guy and plug it in to this. Uh, so we're taking this entire formula and plugging it in here instead of our v uh, average velocity. So we're essentially at this point once more. Now, let's use our first equation and instead of using the velocity and plugging our velocity into this number, this uh, variable, let's instead solve for time and then use the time equation and plug it into the time here. So we take this equation and solve for time. So we basically bring over our v initial v naught and divide by our acceleration and we get our time elapsed is equal to change in our velocity divided by our acceleration. Now we take the time and plug into the time here. So we have this component multiplied by this component shown here. So our final position is equal to initial position, this guy times this component. Now we simply multiply the top, multiply by the bottom, and we get, so our v times v final, v final times v, v final is v final squared, plus our v final times v initial minus v final uh, times v initial minus the two last terms, our v initial squared, and 2 times a, simply 2a. So now we get this equation, we cancel out the middle terms, and we're simply left with our final position is equal to initial position plus our v final squared minus v initial squared divided by 2a. So now we bring over our x uh, initial, so our final position minus initial position, which is our displacement, multiplied by 2a because we bring the 2a over and then at the end we bring our initial v initial squared over and we get 
our final velocity of our object squared equals initial velocity of our object squared plus two times its constant acceleration multiplied by our displacement